Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about every aspect of stenciling with the Magnolia Design Company stencils. So, if you've ever struggled, if you've ever been unhappy with your results, if you've ever had questions or felt like giving up, <laughs> I'm going to help you with all of that today. And hopefully I'll also give you some new ideas. So as you are hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle all that good stuff. Don't hesitate to ask questions as we're going along. I'll try to um, get them out of the comments. But uh, if I miss a comment, I can always answer you after the fact. All right. Okay. So working with these awesome... Magnolia Design Company stencils does not have to be hard if you know the basics. And um, whether you're using a big one, this is my favorite, it's called Victorian Pattern, or if you're using something that's like middle of the road, or you're using something small, this is a Proverbs 31, um, it's all pretty much the same. I'm going to actually demonstrate a couple of things while we're here as well. So I see lots of you guys hopping on. Um, if you have friends that do stenciling that you think might have the same struggles as everyone else, feel free to sprinkle. Okay. So, I guess let's start with what can you stencil. And then I'll jump in and give you tips about actually doing it. Um, First thing, I mean, this is not the first thing you would think of to stencil, but you can stencil on uh, silver platters. I've done that lots. I've done that where I've painted them or not painted them. This was a project for spring that we did a little while ago that's sitting in my kitchen. It's lovely. You can stencil on canvases. This is a really cute beehive pattern and then that's part of a stencil that's all about being kind. You can stencil on wood. You can stencil on wood that is left natural like this. These are paint stir sticks by the way. Um, but they are made of wood, real wood, and they are unstained and unpainted. You can also stencil on wood like this that is painted. And here's another one. I just grabbed a bunch of projects to show you. So you can stencil on wood that is natural, wood that is stained, and wood that is painted. And I have a bunch of tips for that to share with you in just a few minutes. Also, did you know that you can stencil on glass? This is going to be hard to see, but this was a uh, Christ in Crafting this past Sunday. And this is a stencil that says, even the wind and the waves obey him. And I did it with etching cream, so you can stencil on glass. Here's a very big project that you will be able to see. This was an old window that I stenciled on with my favorite stencil and white chalk paste. Um, don't want to break it. Okay, you can also stencil on paper. So it could be cards, whatever you want. This is just craft paper that I turned into a scroll. You can stencil on fabric. Okay, I have a lot of examples of that because that's like my favorite. I love to make my own fabric using some of the all over patterns that Magnolia has. Um, this is a stuffy, this is an embroidery hoop project, but it's fabric. Here is a banner. And here is another small little stuffy. This, yeah, this is canvas deck also. So, but you can stencil on, um, on any kind of fabric. So there's, in addition to that, there's a hundred other things that you could stencil on. Uh, but what I want to tell you about stenciling in general is it is just like riding a bicycle. 
So the first time you rode a bicycle, did you get on it, successfully go around the block, be able to stop and nicely get off the bicycle? No, probably not. <laughs> or maybe that's just my experience as a child. No, it's riding a bicycle is a, something that you learn, that you get the feel of, and once you get the knack of it, it's easy peasy. You almost don't even have to think about it. But you do have to ride a bicycle a few times, crash, skin your knee, tip over, um, you know, those kind of things before you're going to know how to ride a bicycle. Um, stenciling is not brain surgery. It's nothing for you to be afraid of. And um, I am going to probably just ramble and... I'm going to unscrew my head, open it up, and dump out everything I've learned <laughs> that I can think of um, while I'm here with you that will help you to get a better result when you are stenciling. Okay, somebody's just asked me, do I sell my projects? No, I'm sorry, I sure don't. Uh, what, what my goal here is, is to show you how simple they are to make so that you can do it as well. Um, and I do have links to order the stencils, and I always give a recipe of what other things were involved. Um, okay, so let's start with my favorite, which is canvas duck, but this, what I'm gonna tell you about this, applies equally to um, any kind of fabric. All right, we're gonna use this stencil, which I have not used before. One cross, three nails, four given. And I need a Sharpie. To write what it is, I need to find a black sharpie on the back. And I am not going to fuzz this before I use it on a tacky towel or my t-shirt or a pair of jeans because it's going on fabric. I hope this is good information for you guys. Um, Letty says it's fun to use stencils. I totally agree. But every single day, I have several people tell me that they're so frustrated that um, they're not they're not getting a good result and every time I go live with a project involving stencils I pretty much say these same things that we're going to go over now so you might want to grab a pencil and a piece of paper okay first thing is when you're stenciling on fabric or anything else you need to make sure that your surface is flat and that your stencil is fully adhered to the surface. These green stencils from MagnoliaDIY.com, they are adhesive. Um, they have a little stretch to them. They're great to work with. Uh, and let's just do this whole thing in gray, assuming I can get it up. So on fabric, you would use ink. And that one's not open yet. Let me find a different color. I'm really just trying to show you what you do. So fabric, you use ink. And I am just gonna dip directly into my pot because this is a small area. But here's the thing with fabric what it wants to do is absorb the medium into the fibers of the fabric and then spread it out think about what happens if you have a drop of water go on to a piece of fabric it kind of spreads out and makes a bigger pool right well the same thing is happening when you're using um, ink on fabric and um, so what you need to do is get your medium on, get the globs off, resist the urge to go over and over and over and over and over. Don't use too much medium. And just know that with fabric projects, they're not gonna be 100% crisp. Okay, so I have a little bit of ink on here. Not enough, obviously and I'm just going to apply it. Okay. 
And then I'm going to pull up the excess. Okay, so I've got my ink on and now I'm going to pull it off just with my squeegee. I'm just pulling off the big globs and I'll lift this up so that you can see. All right, here's the moment of truth. I'm going to show you a couple fabric projects after I'm done with this. And you can also stencil on painted fabric. One cross, three nails, four given. And what I would say about it is that fabric projects are never completely perfect. Um, this is a good example. This was a stuffy that I made a while back. And if you look up close, I was just talking to my friend Diana this morning about this very topic and I told her, Diana Gomez, if you're watching, I'm talking about you. I told her that I would, I think it would be a good idea for me to go live today. Because if you look up close, when you're using ink on fabric, it's not going to be 100% perfect. It just isn't. So here is what we got. And I think it looks great. So with fabric, you want, this is woven pretty tightly, so I don't think my ink went through it. But if you're doing a t-shirt, don't lay the t-shirt down flat and use ink on the front of it because that will go through to the back of the t-shirt. So make sure you have something in between your layers. Use the least amount of ink that you can. Just get it on and get it off. And don't go over, 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 and don't use an excessive amount of ink. Okay, so that is fabric. Um... Now, I want to give you some tips for wood. Where did I put my wood projects? Oh my goodness, where did I set them? It's got to be, oh, here they are. Okay, tips for wood. Because wood seems to be the thing that people stencil on the most and that have the most problems with. Okay, if your wood is not completely flat, if you purchased it at Dollar Tree and it's not like super great quality and it has, you know, some little ridges in it, it's not going to be perfect almost no matter what you do. But there's a couple things that you can do that might help. One is sand your project. So I would sand it, then I would paint it, then I would sand it, and then I would paint it again to get as smooth of a surface as I can possibly achieve just using some, um, you know, real fine sandpaper and then wipe the dust off. Okay, the other thing is that wood is, this is what I always liken it to and this brings good memories to me. It's like your grandmother or great grandmother or starting to be me. Um, you remember when they put on that red lipstick and you could see little lines of it creeping up in their wrinkles of the red lipstick. It was sort of bleeding into the grooves. Well, the wood is the same. You put your medium on, which is usually chalk paste. It sucks it in and then it wants to spread it out just like the lipstick does. I don't know that it does that as much as it did in the olden days. They probably reformulated it. But that is what happens. So you want to completely cut that possibility off. So your medium isn't going to soak in and spread out. And there's two ways you can do it. This is my favorite, to be honest with you. It's the easiest. I use a clear matte sealer spray. You can use any brand you want. Krylon, Rust-Oleum. But it just needs to be clear. And if you want glossy, you can use glossy, but I like matte better. I get this stuff at Walmart. So I just would spray my wood with maybe two thin coats, one and then let it dry, a second and then let it dry, 
before I stencil and then it's cut off. It can't absorb your chalk paste and spread it all over. However, when you have bumps and it's not fully adhered, it's not going to be perfect. And you just kind of have to get over that. Um, okay, there's a second way that you can stop wood from grabbing it and spreading it all over, and that is by using a clear wax. Magnolia has a great clear wax, and they have a brand new little applicator pad. So you would um, paint, stain, or leave your wood natural. And before you stencil, you're going to apply a very, very, very light coat of wax. And you're going to buff it super well. So don't be heavy handed with this. Because um, this stops it from penetrating, but it can also cause your chalk paste to slide right off if it, if it can't get a hold of anything at all. And that happens sometimes when you've used too much wax or you haven't buffed it enough. So apply wax, buff it really good. I'll usually finish up with a paper towel and then let it dry 30, 40 minutes before you stencil. So these are the two ways to prevent wood from sucking in your chalk paste and spreading it out. You can either do a clear matte sealer spray, this has to be done outside, or a wax and this, by the way, this wax from Magnolia has no scent, which is really nice. I've used other waxes that were super stinky. Um, but you've got to make, if you're going to do this, make sure that you buff, 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 and that you are very stingy with how much you use, okay? And that is why this is my favorite, because sometimes people will use too much wax, and they won't get it buffed enough, or they won't let it dry, and then the chalk paste can't grab onto anything because it's too slippery from the wax and it can almost slide off sometimes. So, um, so just know those two things. If the weather is cooperating and I can hop outside for two seconds, I'll usually use this because there's no issues with it. Um, okay, let me tell you this other thing. This spray is good for a lot of different things. And when I'm stenc stenciling on a canvas that is painted or not, see what these are? Before I stencil, I will put a light coat of clear matte sealer spray on there. I don't know what it is about canvas, especially the inexpensive canvases from Dollar Tree. They can kind of do the same thing as wood. And I hope I'm not overwhelming you. I'm just sharing with you what I have learned, what some tips and tricks or best practices are so that you get the best result. But just remember, like riding a bicycle, it just takes a little practice. So don't have your first stencil be on something uh, super important. You know, practice a few times on different things that you don't care about before you take the plunge and do a stencil on whatever your final project is going to be. So this can help you get a little bit of a better stencil impression, but even so, canvas is bumpy and my stencil is not going to be completely perfect. And you can see that. That is because um, like it has ridges, this canvas stuff does. A million little tiny dots of ridges. In some places your stencil is not going to be pushed down good enough and a little bit of your medium can go under. So, so you just know that you're going to spray and then you're going to stencil. And then if you want this to be here forever, you can spray again. Um, but that is the deal. So you cannot expect to have 100% perfection when you're working on fabric. This is another good example. You know, there's a few places where more ink went through than other places. So you just have to know that that's how it's going to be. Okay, with paper, this is 
This can be tricky, paper and glass. Intuitively, probably you're already thinking all these things. Okay, the awesome stencils from MagnoliaDIY.com are sticky, really sticky. And if you don't fuzz well before you stencil on glass, it's going to be on there. This is smooth, smooth as glass. It's going to be on there, and when you go to remove it, you're, it, you're going to have to really pull and tug and that can stretch your stencil on glass. So you want to make sure that you fuzz extremely well. And this is a tacky towel. This is what I would fuzz on before stenciling on glass or paper. Or I might stencil on, you know, an apron or a t-shirt or a pair of jeans. Those things work too. A couple of times. And then when you pull your stencil up, you won't stretch it out when you're working on glass. Okay, paper is also tricky. And to be completely honest with you, I don't recommend that the very first time that you use a stencil be on paper. Because again, they're sticky. You want to fuzz them really well. But even then, if it's a brand new stencil, sometimes it can pull up little top layers of your paper and um, so you want to use a stencil that is well loved on paper you want to fuzz it and just do one coat one quick coat pull up the globs and then pull up your stencil okay all right and I'm just rambling but um, I hope these rambles are helpful to you. You might want to make a comment here in case you want to be able to find it and come back and rewatch it later. Uh, like if you wanted to rehear what I said about wood. Okay, another thing I want to tell you about, and I'm going to show you, is um, what do you do when you have a stencil that you know is going to take a little while to finish. Um, this amazing chalk paste is awesome to work with, but if you're going super slow, it can dry in the screen of your stencil, this part, which is not going to ruin your stencil because chalk paste is not permanent. You'll be able to wash it out no problem. But you'll be, when you remove your stencil, you will be lifting up, you know, the parts of the chalk paste that have dried in your mesh. So, I'm going to show you. Like, if you're doing a project and you want to use three colors, so Magnolia has four new colors of chalk paste. Um, this one is called Dusty Blue, or Dusky Blue. This one is called French Rose. This one is called Vintage Sage, and this one is called Peachy Keen. So we're going to use multiple colors, and I'm going to show you what you do uh, when you're working with a big stencil. It doesn't matter whether you're using multiple colors or not, but I'm going to show you how to pull up and lay back down. That's the solution to this problem. Oh, Helga says this is great refresher course. I'm so glad. Um, you know, stenciling, to me, is a shortcut. And also, I am crafty, but I'm not artistic. So I don't have good handwriting. Well, you should see it. Um, I can't draw things. Um, so when I use a stencil, it's like, wow, it's a shortcut, a beautiful shortcut. Uh, and it's not hard to stencil. It just takes a little practice. Okay, so this is a blackboard, a beautiful farmhouse blackboard from MagnoliaDIY.com. Put my stencil on. Okay, I'm pressing everything down. And I do see a couple little lumps and bumps that I need to get out of here. Uh, I need to wash my 
kind of fuzzing towel, my tacky towel, because um, I've been doing a bunch of fabric projects and it's got a few little bits of things in it. Where did I see this? Right here. I can see it right here. It's little pieces of canvas duck. Darn it. And they're okay to have little bits of stuff in it as long as it's not by an open part. So let me show you. Do you see this little bump right here? I don't know if you can or not. It's okay. But if it was super close to the edge of something, then I would want to, um, to get that off. Okay, we're going to use... We're going to do this every good and perfect gift is from above in this sage color. And then we're going to use a combination of these colors for the flowers and the greenery. So I'm going to start at the top quarter of my project. Let me open up all my top paste. And I have a lot of different things I want to do here, but I'm going to move relatively quickly. Sometimes when you're new, it's easier to just use one color for the whole entire thing. Okay. I'm going to put some little blobs of this vintage sage where the um, green leaves would be. It does not have to be perfect. I just want to get that on. So I don't forget. Boy, there's a lot of leaves on here. I did not realize that. Okay, and I'm going to apply it. Um, I'm just going to use a small cut apart squeegee um, to push it through the holes on my stencil. And I'm not going to worry if it's 100% perfect because this is a very detailed stencil and it's going to look great no matter what. Putting the little blobs on those areas before you start helps me to identify where I need to be going. And I'm getting it on, and then I'm pulling the big blobs off for the most part, and then I'm going to stop. Okay. So, now I want to do this light peach in the center of my flowers. Oops, that's way too much. And the pink around it and I'm going to actually do um, a little bit of this dusky blue on these three flowers right here. Okay, so another squeegee and I'm just going to start, you can use your finger to, you know, smear a little bit of chalk paste into the center of the project and then I'm just going to use my uh, squeegee to sort of pull it out to the edges. This is going to give it kind of a tie-dye effect, which is really cool. And I'm not going to fuss if I get a little bit of this over the spots that are supposed to be green. Really what I want you to see is what I'm going to do in just a second. Okay, I'm just going to lay that down right there. All right, and now I'm going to use a teeny bit of blue for these little flowers, and then I'm going to show you what you can do with lifting it up. Okay, it might be enough. So that... Um, 
the chalk paste is not sitting in the holes of my stencil while I'm working on the other parts of it. And I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I've sort of done this top third. I might do this part right here too. That's going to be green. Tell me if you've ever done this before. Okay, it's the top half, top third, sort of. I'm going to very gently, sometimes you have to use one of these little store sticks to get underneath the corner. I'm going to very gently, ooh, this is going to be pretty, pull up that top part of my stencil, pull it straight down. And then I'm going to lay it back down gently and do the rest of my stencil. And I'm going to do the rest of it in this sage green. So I lifted it up to make it so that the chalk paste would not dry in the mesh screen while I'm working on the rest of it. And I just laid it down gently, which is not going to mess it up. corner again and pull this whole thing up. Wow, this is really pretty. Let me throw this in the water and I'll come back and we'll talk about it. Okay, so especially when you're working with a really big stencil or lots of colors, you can apply either a top third or a top half or a side third or a side half. And then when you get that part completed, you're going to lift your stencil up just a little bit so it releases the chalk paste onto your project. And then you lay it down gently and you can finish. And that is what keeps it from drying in the mesh holes in your stencils if you're working on something. And sometimes, you know, if you want to give a project a lot of attention, you might be taking 20 minutes. And if you leave chalk paste on a stencil on a surface for 20 minutes, it will be dry. So when you pull it up, then you're going to pull up most of your chalk paste. Anyways, what do you guys think about that? Isn't it pretty? So that was that tip that I wanted to share. Okay. Who has questions or issues that maybe I can give you some advice for? And you do want to close these pronto. I'm not going to do it right now, but um, ask me your questions about stenciling or tell me what you've struggled with. I see lots of um, thumbs and hearts coming up. Okay, so a couple of the most common problems that I see or hear about almost every day are um, caused by people using too much medium and almost pushing it underneath the stencil or by them going over and over and over and over and that kind of pushes it underneath the holes of the stencil too. That is hard to resist, you know, because you just want to make sure you got everything covered, but you don't just keep going over and over and over because when you do that, you're pushing it through the edges underneath your stencil and you'll have a blurry effect. Same thing happens if you have way too much chalk paste or way too much ink that you're applying. What's the exact name of the new green one? My new blue and green ones didn't come with labels. Huh. Maybe they were so excited to get them shipped out, they didn't stick the little stickers on the bottom. This blue is called Dusky, D-U-S-K-Y blue. And this green, which is really awesome, is called Vintage Sage. 
Okay, Cheryl Burr has a great question. I have a problem with the stickiness of the stencil. I try to follow all the rules and I lose the stickiness. That is something that kind of does, just does happen. Let me show you a stencil. It's a great example of that. My original uh, Victorian pattern and you can see it's not very sticky anymore at this point but when you lay it down on your project we'll pretend that this is our project right here you're going to press your stencil down even if it's not super sticky and then you can apply some blobs of your chalk paste or ink, depending on what you're working with, and it acts like a little cement. So I would, you know, put something in the center and something out to the edges, and that will also help hold your stencil down. And then you're holding it with your hand, and you move from one side to the other. That helps. Okay, so why do these lose their stick? Um, they just do. Uh, you can try reviving some of the stickiness two ways that I have discovered. One is to use an antibacterial, uh, anti I almost said antibiotic, antibacterial wipe on the back of them and then let it air dry. That can sometimes revive the stick. The other thing I found is... And I don't know how Magnolia feels about this, but it has worked for me. And I wasn't trying to revive the stick, but I did notice that the stickiness was increased. This is a stencil cleaner sponge from MagnoliaDIY.com. Sometimes, I mean all the time, I will clean the front of my stencil with this and water. Sometimes I will put a little drop of dish soap on it and clean the front of my stencil, rinse it out, and then if it was a stencil like this, I've used the stencil probably over 60 times, but if you take care of them, you know, you this one is still going to work just fine. It just looks terrible, <laughs> and that's proof that I love it. So you can flip your stencil over in your sink and put another little drop of dish soap on, and if you notice that there are fibers stuck in the stickiness of your stencil, okay, Liz, I'll come back to that question in just a second. She's asking about a spray to make them sticky. And I'll, um, you know, go over the back. I'll sometimes use my fingers if I can feel that there's some, some fibers stuck in the back of it. And... So I'm using this on the back, which I don't think Magnolia necessarily recommends. They also probably don't recommend that you use dish soap on the back, but I have, and it has helped. And then you just want to lay it on the counter to dry. So that may revive some of the stickiness, um, but again, even a stencil with no stick, you can still use it by putting some blobs on, working from one side to the other, and it almost glues it down. And then you're just going to hold your stencil in place. Um, okay, so Liz was just suggesting that there is a spray, uh, an adhesive spray that you can use on your stencils. And um, here's what I know. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> um, I have never tried it. It frightens me, actually because I'm afraid that the spray is going to go into these little holes, these little mesh holes on my stencil, and clog it up. If you want to purchase some spray adhesive and try it, it's worth a try if you're willing to take the chance that it's not great for your stencil. I know other people have done it. I just haven't because I want to use my stencils way more than the recommended manufacturer amount is. I want to use them 60 times. I want to use them one season, put them away, then pull them out the next year, 
then put them away, and then pull them out the next year. So that's why I haven't, um, that's why I've not used that. Okay, Nancy has a great um, comment. She says that she etched a stencil on glass that was curved. And in some places, the stencil didn't stick. And it almost kind of creased. Okay, well, here's the thing. When you're choosing what you're going to etch, you want to choose a surface. It could go this way. Um, a surface that's going to be as flat as possible because you need to get that stencil down every single bit. And if you're trying to do like a wine glass or something that's got a curved bottom, that's not going to work well. So you want to look for things that are straight up and down, like this. See? It is straight. Down here's a curve, but I didn't put my stencil down here for this part. So that's what the situation is. You can kind of pinch together some little bits at the bottom where it's curving and just, uh, you know, be cautious of that spot with etching cream, or even if you were doing something with chalk paste like, um, like this, if it was curved, you can do that, but you're not gonna get as good of a result because your stencil needs to be on flat and completely adhered. Okay, let me see what were the other questions. Who else has a question? Okay, I think I answered the ones that I've seen come through so far. Whoops, now my, and I'm sorry that I'm rocking my phone. Let me get to the bottom. Who else has a question? What do you do if you use a stencil, for example, on a piece that's painted, and you didn't fuzz it sufficiently, and it pulls up some of the paint that is stuck on the back? of your stencil. What do you do? Well, what I would do is I would put it in a little tub of cool water and let it soak for a little while. And then very gently, I would use this awesome sponge from MagnoliaDIY.com to move whatever might be stuck on the back off. Whether it's little pieces of canvas drop cloth or pieces of paint or pieces of paper. Okay, um, does warm or hot water damage the stencil? That's a great question. Don't use hot water. I use, you know, I use cool water uh, on mine. And let me show you what's happening over here. And I want to give you a warning about it. Okay, this is my tub that you hear me saying I'm gonna just go put my stencil in a tub of water until I can get out to the kitchen to clean it. Um, yes, so that's what I do because I can't run out to the kitchen and clean my stencil uh, every, you know, right away because I'm talking to you guys live. So I throw mine in a tub of water and then the second I'm done, before I start reading comments, I go straight out to the kitchen and I wash my stencil and I lay it on the counter with the sticky side up to dry. You guys, one time, it was Easter-ish two years ago, I think, um, I made the horrible mistake, I was not paying attention. I thought I was laying my stencil on the counter to dry with the sticky side up, but it was sticky side down. And by the time I came back to it, it was practically glued onto the counter. So it destroyed the stencil. I was able to get it off of, at that point, we had granite countertops. But it's got to be up, okay? Um, somebody's asking, can you use etching cream with stencils? Yes, you absolutely can. On Sunday, we did that beautiful glass face that has the even the winds and waves obey him. Uh, verse from the Bible on it, and I just use Armor Etch. You can use whatever brand 
this does not hurt stencils. In fact, sometimes if your stencil, if the screen is a little gunked up, using this on it can ungunk it a little bit. I don't know if gunk is a proper word. Um, but yes, you can use this. You don't ever want to use paint. Let me show you. Don't use any kind of paint. No acrylic paint, no chalk paint. Paint dries quickly in the holes in that mesh on your stencil, and it's permanent. You cannot remove it. So if you want to have a $20 stencil that you're only going to be able to use maybe two or three times, go for it. I know this is less expensive than a pot of chalk paste or ink, but it's going to way shorten the life of your stencil because by the time you're finished, it will be starting to dry and clog the little holes in your screen. Um, so it can be chalk paint, acrylic paint, latex paint, craft paint, milk paint, any of those paints don't use on your stencils if you want to. Okay, I think I'm back. I don't know, we're having internet issues. I'm so sorry. Um, I think I'm back. Okay, so you don't want to use any paint. But here's the biggest misconception that chalk paint is the same thing as chalk paste. They both have the word chalk in them. So are they the same thing? No. Chalk paste is like those little white sticks that your teacher used when you were in elementary school on the blackboard and then she could wipe it off. Except, it's just like that, except it has some moisture put in it to make it a paste and color. This is what this is, it's not permanent. This chalk paint is paint. So they're not anything the same. You cannot use uh, chalk paint on your stencils. Well, you can, it's up to you, but uh, it's not worth the risk. If you bought a stencil for $20 that you love and you want to be able to use it this year, next year, the year after, the year after, you want to make a variety of projects with it, um, then don't use paint. Even if it's less expensive than a pot of chalk paste or ink. So you can use chalk paste, ink, etching cream. That's pretty much all that I know of or currently use on my stencils, but no paint. Um, let's see, I know I saw another question that went by and then I forgot what it was. Let's see. Yes, you can use etching cream. Oh, okay. It was Tammy's question. She ordered a stencil um, chalk paste to do a cutting board. How do you seal that? Okay, so what you're going to want to do with a wood cutting board is you're going to either paint or stain it or leave it natural. And then you're going to want to do a light coat of clear matte sealer spray or a super, super light super well buffed coat of clear wax on it and make sure it's fully buffed and fully dry before you stencil. And then you can stencil on it with chalk paste. And um, then you can spray it if you want it to be there forever. However, you're not gonna be able to make something that then you could put cheese and olives and you know moist foods on. It's gonna be more decorative. Uh, so that's the story with that. You're not going to be able to cut bread on it. Um, it's not going to withstand that. Even if you did 25 clear coats, it's not. Uh, so you could put some designs out towards the edge or on the handle if you want to actually put food on it. But then when it's time to clean it, don't stick it in a sink of warm soapy water. Because this does make it more permanent, but it's still chalk paste under there. And most likely you'll lose that design. 
Um, this stuff is not poisonous, <laughs> but, you know, I don't want to have a piece of cheese at, uh, on a charcuterie tray or something and pick it up and there's a, a patch of green chalk paste on it. So if you want to use a tray, a cutting board for something like that, then just put your things in little glass dishes. That looks pretty. You could lay crackers on it or even some pieces of bread. But for your olives, your, your uh, different meats, your different cheeses, berries, that kind of thing, put them in little glass dishes. Okay, let me see what the other question was. And I'm sorry, when I move the comments, my tripod. Can you order the chalk paste in a variety pack? You can order a spring package of six different colors. They come in little pouches. I'll show you what it looks like. They look like this. You can squeeze them out into some little containers if you have some. Or just take this shut when you're done and store it in a plastic bag, you know, squeeze all the air out. But it would be a package of six of these, different colors, if they're still available. Those do tend to go out of stock quickly. If you're brand new and you don't want to do that, then what I recommend is you get a black and a white. A little pot of black and a little pot of white chalk paste to start. And you can do so much with black and white. Okay, let me see what the other questions are. Feel free to ask. Um, yeah, a lot of people are saying other crafters are freezing. Okay, this is a good question. Um, Rosemarie is asking, is there any way to take off all of the stains? Well, let me show you something. you use the stencil cleaner sponge and a little dish soap right at the time that you're finished doing whatever, whether it's chalk paste or ink, and you go around the edge, you can lift most of it up. Uh, the new formulations of chalk paste and ink seem to be a little easier to get the stains up, but the stains don't affect the um, stencils use at all. Uh, this one says he is risen. It's part of a two-piece uh, stencil. And I've had it for a while. And um, I don't know. If you're using like a black or a navy blue or red, any of those colors that are super heavily pigmented, you're more likely to get a stain. But that won't ruin the use of it. So once the stain is there, you're done washing it, and it isn't going to come up, then it's going to be there. But this is like, I always think about this example. Who um, went to Pampered Chef parties years ago? I did. It seems like everybody I knew was having a Pampered Chef party, and that's how I stocked my kitchen when I was newly married, with just different little gadgets from different parties. Um, okay, so they had these uh, clay or stone baking dishes that were round and square. And I vividly remember the, the um, consultant for Pampered Chef saying that over time they get stained. They get seasoned is what they call it. And that makes them work better. They just look not great, but it doesn't hurt them at all. And it's the same way with this. They just do get stained a little bit, but it does not affect um, your ability to use them. That was a great question, Rosemary. Let's see, what else do we have? I really need to get a new tripod. <laughs> Susie says that she had all the parties. I had my fair share too, because I had several friends that did that and those those parties were fun i have you know still oodles of gadgets from pampered chef i think i finally gave away my baking stones because frankly they were too 
heavy to bulky. Um, okay, I think that was Nancy. It was either Nancy or Mary. And she's asking a great question. Yeah, Nancy. She says, can you mix colors? Yes, you absolutely can. So say you want a pink like this, but you want it much lighter. You can mix together. I need to get this closed. Um, you can mix together some of this French rose chalk paste with some white chalk paste to alter the color. If you know how um, colors work, then you can mix other colors to create new colors. Yes, you absolutely can do that. And it's the same thing with ink. Uh, you can also put multiple colors on and kind of do a little squiggly do. But here's the thing. Whoops, whoops. You cannot mix ink with chalk paste. That's not going to work. I mean, it might work, but then when you put it on something and heat set it, it won't be permanent. You, you'll likely have a big mess the first time it gets damp or wet. So, yeah, but you can create your own custom colors. Personally, I love it better, like this one that we just did, when you kind of smooch uh, your colors together. Like, look at the center of these flowers. That's the peachy keen. And then I kind of rubbed it out into the pink. Um, and you could do, like, I could have done this whole thing that way, a bunch of dots of different colors, and then you just take your squeegee and you do something like this, and you get sort of a tie-dye look, which is fabulous. Nancy says her garlic press is still her favorite today. You know what? I don't have that anymore, and I bought a new garlic press because I'm really enjoying cooking these days, now that we're empty nesters. Um, and I don't have to be fussy about whether my kids will eat this or that. But I don't have a good garlic press. I don't like the one that I have. <laughs> I wish I had my old Pamper Chef one. My family has not been able to figure out the can opener from Pamper Chef because it goes around the top <coughs> to cut the top off, not on the side. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so, whenever, like, my son <coughs> and his wife, excuse me, I'm so sorry, are here and they want to open up a can of soup or something, they have to ask me to do it because they can't figure it out. Does anyone have that can opener from Pampered Chef? I don't know how we got on the, the topic of Pampered Chef. I was talking about stains. But, does anyone else have questions that I can answer? If you have friends that use, now what I have told you today only applies to Magnolia Design Company. I don't know anything about the other companies that offer stencils or chalk paste or ink. This is real, I mean, so what I told you today is only for Magnolia. Um, I suspect that it's all kind of the same with all of those different companies. Um, but what was I going to say? I've completely lost my train of thought. Um, so I, oh, I know, I was going to say, so if you have friends that are stencilers um, or that are wanting to do this, sprinkle this video to them or tell, just tag them in it or tell them. Um, to come watch this because I literally unscrewed the top of my head and dumped out in a very rambling format uh, everything I know and I'm sure there's things that I still didn't tell you but let's go back to the first thing I said um, stenciling is like riding a bicycle it's not brain surgery it's riding a bicycle it just takes a little practice the first couple times that you rode a bicycle, you probably tipped over and skinned your knee and you told your mom or dad, whoever was helping you, that you were never going to ride a bicycle ever again. <sighs> you know, or you ran into something or whatever, because you just got to get the hang of it. It's the same with stenciling. You just got to get the feel of it, and then it's kind of intuitive. It will make sense to you, but if you 
don't start on that super important project the very first go. You know, do something else, practice a little, ride your bicycle just a little bit before you try to do a um, project. Susie says she had to train her hubby three times before he got it, to use the can of work, I'm assuming. Yeah, my husband, he knows how to do it, but both of my boys cannot figure it out. And I love it. It has that little gripper thing, so you pull the lid right off. So just know if your surface is bumpy, you know, like, uh, like a canvas stretched canvas. It has little bumps or like a piece of wood that has grains or anything else that's kind of bumpy, then you can't expect it to be a hundred percent crisp and perfect. Just know that you need to try your best to just get the medium on, whether it's chalk paste or ink, the minimum amount that you need, not an excess huge amount, then you want to scrape it off and then you want to stop and you can lift up a corner and peek. But don't do this over and over and over and over and over and over and over because you're pushing whatever that medium is underneath the stencil. And if you start with a big huge blob, you're, you're likely to push it under your stencil too, whether it's ink or chalk paste. So, I always say when I'm doing my videos to resist the urge to go over and over and over. Okay, Gail says, would getting monthly boxes get me going? I am new to this. And I believe somebody else asked the same question. Yeah, join Craft Club. That's a great way to try because I do a different kind of project every month. You'll get a surface. You'll get a stencil that's reusable. You'll get whatever doodads there are for the project, the surface. You'll get the medium, whether it's ink or chalk paste. And those little pouches are what you're going to get. You're just going to use what you need for the project, fold it over, tape it shut, put it in a Ziploc bag. Or if you have some little containers with a tight-fitting screw lid, you can put it in that. And that's a great way to give it a try. So I would recommend it if you want a link to join my craft club. I would love to have you join. Just let me know. And I, when I'm all finished here, I will go sit down and I will get you a direct link. Oh, Nancy has a great tip I want to share. She says she has learned to place something hard underneath the canvas when she's stenciling. Yeah, for sure. Because that's that same thing. You need your stencil to adhere to every single bit of it. And if you were stenciling a t-shirt uh, on the with you know something soft under it then it's not going to be a hundred percent adhered so you definitely want to do it on something hard and flat Sharon says she loves craft club and she can't wait for April's me too I'm so curious to know what it's going to be usually Magnolia tells us the last day of the month what it will be for the next month. And then normally I'll, if I can hold the secret, I will until the next day, but sometimes I'm too excited. <laughs> and I'll share the images of what the next project will be. Yeah, Gail, I'll get you a link right away when I hop off. Okay, if you're brand new, again, I would recommend you start with chalk paste, get a black and a white pot these last forever or just get a black if that's all you can do and purchase a smaller stencil you don't want to go out of the gate with some gigantic super complicated stencil get something that's you know like eight and a half by eleven that kind of size that will be easier to start with and make sure you get a squeegee if you don't have oh and every month with craft club you get a new squeegee so it's Craft Club is great because there's everything you need for a whole entire project. Then you can reuse your stencil over and over and over and over. And the, there's almost always leftover medium, whether it's chalk paste or ink. And sometimes there's leftover doodads. Like this was this month, and I still have a good bit of ribbon and some of this greenery. 
and I could use it for something else. All right. Um, I think I've talked longer than I probably should. So I'm going to say goodbye now, but do with this or this. Check to see if you've liked and followed this page. And if you want, say something to me. You could say abracadabra or it doesn't even have to be <laughs> saying something real. But Facebook takes those things into consideration when they're deciding who they're going to show a video that I do to or a picture post. Um, and if you don't like and follow this page, you haven't ever done this or this or said something, then most likely they're not going to show, I'm not going to come up across your feed. How much is it to join? Okay, Brenda, I think you're asking about how much is it to join Craft Club. Craft Club is $22.95 a month, um, and it's a really a great deal. Plus, whatever your state sales tax is, some states don't have it, other states do, so that depends on your state, and then there's a flat $5 shipping fee. If you wanted information about becoming a creator, um, say creator info in the comments and I'll get it for you. Oh, thanks, Cheryl from Home of My Making. She says good info. Uh, and Carolyn says wonderful info. Thank you. Please don't be overwhelmed. I repeated the same information multiple times. This is not brain surgery. It's just going to take a little practice. And then you'll be an expert. And you know how? Like, I haven't ridden a bicycle in many years because they hurt my tailbone. Um, but I could get on a bicycle and ride it no problem today. You know, it's almost like it comes back automatically like driving a car. And it's kind of the same with stenciling. You get the feel for it. You know what it feels like on fabric versus a chalkboard versus wood versus an old window or glass. You just get the feel of it and then you don't have to think so much. Thank you, Becky. That's so sweet of you to say. All right. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. I'm going to go look at all your comments. If you're even watching this on replay, don't hesitate to comment or ask questions then because I do keep coming back to my videos for at least a week after they play, you know, live. So I will answer your questions. Martha says she wants to get started doing the stencils. Well, Martha, I'll send you a link to my website. And if there's a specific one that you're interested in, let me know that, and I'll get you that directly. All right. Take care. Hope to see you again soon.